The total number of coronavirus cases going up to 590 from 456 yesterday. Yeah, it's a big rise. We had 456 yesterday, more cases today. The trajectory is carrying on very much the way the experts had predicted. Now, we've had a number of cases, a, a large spike, I believe, in Scotland. I'm just trying to find some more information about some information that has just been sent to me. But, yes, yeah, certainly this is... Um, it's, it's a significant spike, but we can't exactly tell what those figures mean. Um, Ashish, we're just understanding that uh, two more patients have died in UK hospitals um, from COVID-19. That's coming from NHS England. So that brings the total who have sadly died to 10. To 10, yeah. We had two more yesterday. Um, again, elderly patients with underlying health conditions. It's not... Not unexpected. It's not unexpected, but what I'm trying to say is that the figures will only make sense to the people who are modelling at the moment, right? So the, the government will look at these figures and they'll look at what's happening across Europe. They will then decide when the time is right to move into the delay phase. That The figures don't tell us anything on their own at the moment, right? So we, have, we know that the elderly and people with underlying health conditions are the most effective, uh, are most affected, and we know that the number of dead is expected to rise over the coming weeks. We, the spike is about three to five weeks away. What we're waiting on now is what the government intends to do about its next phase, its strategy, the delay phase, and moving into that to prevent mass gatherings, people, uh, children going to school, encouraging people to stay at home and work from home. All of this will not be led by the number of people who are being infected and the number of people who are dying. It will be decided by the the scientists who think it will be the right time to move into that phase. Yesterday, we had the World Health Organization calling this a pandemic. That would have been another trigger if the government needed one to move into the next phase. And certainly, what is happening across Europe with Ireland and France and Germany and Poland and Denmark, those countries, and Italy, of course, those countries taking quite what some people might suggest is quite drastic actions, shutting down movement within society, shutting down workplaces, stopping people from gathering, um, stopping people going out shopping. Shops in Italy, the, the only ones that are open at the moment are food shops, uh, pharmacies. So this is serious action. But then the pressure on the United Kingdom is that these leaders, these medical experts across Europe are saying, don't wait too long. Look at what's happened in this country. You've got to take action soon. And Martha, just briefly, that's what the world of sport will be looking for uh, from this COBRA meeting today in terms of if mass gatherings are stopped anytime soon. That has a huge hit on all UK sport. Mm -hmm. and we heard Nicola Sturgeon in Scotland saying that she was minded um, to ban gatherings of over 500 people, but she was waiting the outcome of that COBRA meeting this afternoon. But that is something that particularly the Premier League will be looking at, whether it is the right course of action to hold games behind closed doors. Um, Liverpool, of course, on the brink of their first Premier League title um, for 30 years. And they'll be wondering whether if there is... Um, a, a, if the, the Premier League is postponed, um, whether they are given that title or not. So there's plenty of uncertainties around at the moment. Um, but we do see um, in NBA, um, the American basketball, that's, that league's suspended indefinitely at the moment. Um, we've got a Melbourne Grand Prix, which incredibly at the moment is still going ahead, despite the fact that McLaren, one of the teams, has had to withdraw from that Grand Prix because one of their staff members has, t has tested positive for COVID-19. And yeah. that's caused a, a lot of consternation. Um, Lewis Hamilton, Britain's Formula One champion, has said he cannot believe they're still there. He says they're, they're prizing money over people's safety. The Premier League will want to be avoided being viewed in the same way. OK, Martha, thank you. Um, with relation to those two new deaths, uh, bringing the total number of uh, UK deaths to 10 now uh, from COVID-19. We've just had a statement from the two hospitals have, uh, where yeah. those patients died. Yeah, but the first statement is from the Imperial College Healthcare Trust. It says we can confirm an 89-year-old patient who was very unwell with underlying health conditions has passed away at Charing Cross Hospital. So that's in West London or central West London, an 89-year-old patient. The other one is, uh, the statement is from the Barking, Havering and Redbridge University Hospitals, NHS Trust, and they said we can confirm that a patient who was in her 60s 
uh, who tested positive for COVID-19 has sadly died at Queen's Hospital. She had been very unwell with significant other health conditions. So every time we read a statement like this, the, the emphasis is on age and underlying health conditions.